All right, so let's look at a tangent function if we just have um, a little something going on here. And again, the math is very, very similar to what we've done with cosine and sine. It's just that um, the shape of the graph is different. The other thing is five key points is not going to cut it. So yeah, we have these guys um, added to the mix. So we have our 90s, but we've also added our 45s. So this is zero. Um, when I hit here, I get square root of two over two divided by square root of two over one, or square root of two over two, which is one. When we get up here, this is pi over two. Um, this is zero, one. And when I divide sine by cosine, that's undefined. Right, and so I can go around my circle, and we did this in the previous um, video, but I can divide to get these guys. All right, so for example, this is going to be a negative one because x and y match, but x is positive, y is negative, and so I can get that. Or this guy is 0, negative 1, so if I take sine divided by cosine, it's undefined. So that's how I get my key points. Now, notice, kind of like before, um, how am I going to fix? Well, this is impacting the angle. So my fix for x is just to um, either divide by 2 or, or, if you think more in terms of fractions, multiply by half. Um, there's no phase shift here. There's no um, vertical shift. Now, with these, we don't really talk about amplitude because they go off to infinity, so that really wouldn't make sense. But there's no um, stretch on it or shrink on it that's going to impact it. So... All I'm going to do is take all these angles and um, multiply them by a half, and then I'm going to get my new values. So I'm going to go ahead and let me grab, where did my eraser go? Oh, this is interesting. It's somewhere. There we go. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let's see if I can do that. Get my pen here. Unfortunately, this is covering it up today. Not sure why. All right, so I think I can write here. All right, so I'm going to have zero. So I'm just taking half. So half is zero, zero. Half of that is what? Pi over eight. Um, this guy would be what? Two pi over eight. And you can see my unit, obviously. Um, so three pi over eight. 4 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 6 pi over 8, 7 pi over 8, and then 8 pi over 8. All right. And then as far as these go, those are the same. All right. So there's no, um, nothing I need to worry about those. So it's still 0, still 1, still undefined, still negative 1, still 0, still 1, still undefined, still negative 1, 0. All right, and that's just a little extra. All right, so to graph this, then, what would I do? Well, I kind of know the shape. So you should kind of know that general shape of a tangent, okay, after our first video. All right, and there's going to be asymptotes separating these guys. All right, I'm just going to if I can get to that again. All right, so... There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and graph these, and again, we can graph on the positive side or negative side, but I only have positive values here, but again, once we get the um, swing of things, we should be okay. We could go on the other side, too, and my units are pi over 8s now. So here's pi over 8. And then 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi over 8. All right, and I could label all those. Um, and you could reduce them if you wanted to be nice. Like instead of 2 pi, you could put over 8, you could put pi over 4. But really, this is to help you. Um, so as long as you label your units in a, however you want to label them, like pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, um, whatever helps you is good enough. All right, so 0, 0 is a point. Pi over 8, I'm up at 1, and then I'm undefined. All right, so let me put my asymptote right there, um, and that's your pi over 4. Now again, I know how this looks. So if this is at pi over 8, I know if I go back, this guy must be here, and I know my next tick mark would be an asymptote on those side of things. So again, I'm not the best at drawing these, but there we go. 
And again, it gets really close, but it doesn't touch. All right, so where I'm at at 3 pi over 8, which would be right here, I go down to negative 1. So there's 3 pi over 8. And then the next one is 4 pi over 8, which is what? Pi over 2. That's at 0. Right, and then my next one is up at 1, which again, once you see the pattern, then you're like, of course. All right, here's my asymptote. So this is what, 4 pi over 8, so this would be what, 5 pi over 8. This is 6 pi over 8, or 3 pi over 4. All right, so again, this gets infinite close, comes up here, kind of curves, and again, gets really close, but doesn't cross, and not very beautiful, but it'll work. And then again, here's 7 pi over 8, which again, once I see the pattern, I'm down at, what, negative 1, then I'm at 0, then I'm at positive 1, and then I have an asymptote. So I know that pattern, and again, I can try to graph 2, oh boy, the best of my ability. And you can graph it on a graphing calculator to look at it also, but you should be able to graph that by hand.